My name is Jackson Kinyanju, the founder of Climate Change Kenya, and today I want us to look at the GIS simulation of Lake Elementaita and its flooding scenarios. Lake Elementaita or Elementaita is located in the Rift Valley between Lake Naivasha and Lake Nakuru. It's saline in nature and its main tributaries are River Mereroni, River Mbaruk and River Kariandusi as well as freshwater and saline hot springs located in the southern part of the lake. The hot springs are a major source of phosphorus and nitrogen into the lake. The name Elementator was derived from the Maasai word Mutaita, meaning dust place, referencing to the dryness and dustiness of the area. The lake has a mean depth of 0.7 meters and a maximum depth of 1.8 meters and has a fluctuating lake area of between 15 to 22 kilometers squared. The lake has been increasing in volume from its current surface elevation of 1670 meters to 1775 meters above sea level. Lake Elementator Basin has a subsurface flow flowing from Lake Naivasha. Lake Elementator has been categorized by UNESCO as a bad heritage site together with Lake Nakuru and Lake Bogori. Lake Elementator has over 400 species of birds, flamingos, zebras, gazelles, elands, and warthogs. The flamingos, which include the greater and the lesser flamingos, feed on the crustaceans and the algae. Also, there is one species of fish found within the saline lake, that is Lake Magadi Tilapia, which was introduced in the lake in 1962. Some of the human activities taking place within and around the lake include bird watching, a little bit of fishing and also there is salt harvesting. Nearly all the land around the lake is now part of the private fenced Soisambu Conservancy and it is only accessible from the camps and lodges around the lake shore. Some of the solutions that need to be put in place to protect the lake from flooding in the future include protecting the catchment area which is an agricultural catchment area and the catchment area has been known to increase or has been known to be a main source of phosphorus and sediment loading also they need to increase afforestation activities around the catchment area on top of that they need to create a canal that can be able to exit or remove the excess water that has been flowing within the lake. Finally, beacons need to be erected around the lake to ensure people know the markings and where they should settle or not settle. This will help to ensure that people's lives are safeguarded. Thank you for listening and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much.